Welcome to how to run WordPress on your laptop. I'm James Lewis. People call me the WP Guru, but I'm not going to get into that now. Now, WordPress usually lives in the cloud, somewhere on a web server. It doesn't matter if it's WordPress.com or if it's your own self-hosted version of WordPress. Usually it lives somewhere out there on a computer that's always on so everyone from all over the world can constantly have a look at your website and you could be asleep or you could be updating it or whatever but sometimes you want to have WordPress on your local system you may not have an internet connection you may want faster access you may want to build something develop something before you present it to the world. There could be all kinds of reasons. Uh, us developers, we love having a local version here so we can go to a coffee shop where the internet connection is flaky and we can still meddle with the theme or we can add content and uh, migrate that website to a live WordPress production server later. And in this tutorial, we're gonna speak about how we make that happen. I'm using a Macintosh so a MacBook Pro I'm using uh, and that means I need a different installer for this than people who are using a Windows computer um, but in principle the process is exactly the same so if you're using a Mac you will be using a package called MAMP and if you're using a Windows machine then you will be using a package called WAMP or XAMP we'll go through the differences in a second so let's uh, why, why can't we just why can't we just pop WordPress into a folder on our local computer and make it work well. The reason for that is because WordPress needs a few different things than say a Word document or something else. WordPress needs three things really. It needs a web server, usually that's Apache, could be um, Lite TTPD, could be anything else, uh, but that's basically a service that when your browser sends something over there that brings you, that gives you a static file, like an HTML file or an image file, something like that. So there needs to be something like a service there that can react to a request that your browser sends. So that's number one. Number two is we need a database server. So that's a little bit like, it's difficult to explain really. Uh, it's, uh, imagine it's something like your email account, where you need a, you need a a host name for that like hotmail.com you need a username and you need a password and once you've got all those things then you can log into the database and query it you can say give me all the posts from last Tuesday or give me all the posts from a category that's called um, dream cars or whatever so that's the that's the MySQL database that's what WordPress needs to store content which is anything other than image or um, uh, document files. So anything that's text content that goes in the MySQL database. And the third thing that WordPress needs is somebody who understands PHP. PHP is a scripting language and that's, uh, that's what WordPress is built with and it's responsible for much of the logic of WordPress. So say if you have theme number one activated then PHP is the thing that goes ahead and says I will now serve the browser with the theme files of theme number one if theme number two would be active then I would serve different files likewise if plugin XYZ is activated then I will serve the corresponding files and if it isn't then I'll serve different files so that's why we need PHP and we need those three things to make WordPress you know live and breathe and uh, MAMP is the thing that helps us bring that to a local machine. Usually these three things together they're referred to as what's known as a lamp stack and that's not so much the ceiling lamp in your bedroom it is a, a combination of Linux, Apache, MySQL and PHP so exactly the three things that we just said WordPress needs to live and breathe and uh, over 80% of all the computers that, that live in the cloud and that are constantly on, that are happy to give you websites, they run on usually an open source version of Linux. That's why that is referred to as a LAMP stack. Uh, on our local machine, we will use a program that's called MAMP, and you can probably guess why it's called MAMP for Macintosh, because it is Macintosh 
Apache, MySQL, and PHP, all bundled together. You can probably also guess that if you're running this on a Windows machine, it's probably called a WAMP stack. So that would be Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. If you're on a Macintosh, you head over to MAMP.info, and then this site comes up. I think the default is actually that the site comes up in German, but don't worry about that. You just click the um, you just click the thing at the top and switch it to English. And then you can download one of two packages. Uh, download this one here, the free version of MAMP, if you're on a Macintosh. If you're on a Windows computer, you can either go to apachefriends.org forward slash en forward slash XAMP, or you can go to um, wampserver.com, and they will both do pretty much the same as what we're doing. So if you're, if you're downloading this, then you will end up with the package that I've already downloaded earlier, uh, and that's the MAMP uh, zip package. And you just double click that, it unzips it for you, it creates a package thing, you click on it, and then you install it. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that again, but it's fairly straightforward. You, you install it, and then uh, MAMP is ready and MAMP will then live in your applications directory. There will be two subdirectories, it will be MAMP and MAMP Pro. So the, the difference is that MAMP Pro is something you need to pay for and it gives you thousands of configuration options. We're not going to go through that, we're quite happy with the free version here. And if you open that folder, there will be one thing in there that's just, that's, that is called MAMP. If you're using this more often uh, or regularly, then I would suggest you put that on, on the dock. You can just drag this out and slide it onto the dock and drop it in between the icons where that is, where, where you want that to happen. I've already, oops, I've already, let me quickly undo that here. I've, uh, I've already done that, so I can just click the little thing. You may experience uh, some like a window that pops up. Uh, do you want to use MAMP or MAMP Pro? Just use MAMP and that's all fine. If you do that, then it will automatically open up a web page like this, which is the MAMP start page. And that just lets you know that MAMP is in fact properly installed on your system and that everything is working fine. It also pops up this little window here uh, with which you can start and stop these services, so Apache and PHP and MySQL. You can click stop and these two lamps will turn red, in which case if you try and refresh the MAMP page, nothing will happen because those services aren't running and that's the default status of any computer. And if you've got a start service, then these lights will turn green and then if you refresh the page, we're in luck, MAMP is up and running again. So this is really, really cool. And it was fairly easy to get that going. Now, let me direct your attention to the URL bar here. So it currently says localhost colon 8888. You may not be familiar with this, but localhost is the domain of your current computer if a web server is running. And in this case, localhost on port 8888 is how you can talk to the web server. And so uh, forward slash MAMP is, is just the start page here. You can always bring that up if you close that down uh, by just clicking this one, open start page. That'll bring up the MAMP start page. It's an important page. We'll talk about this in a minute because we need to configure a couple of things to make WordPress happy. Uh, but the tabs at the top here uh, they, you know, PHP info will tell you we're running PHP version 5.4, for example. Xcache will not worry about. It. PHP MyAdmin will let you configure the MySQL database, which I have several pre-configured here already. And if you were to take all this away and just go to localhost colon 8888, uh, nothing happens. There's just a white page, and this is where we're going to put WordPress. So if you go back into your applications, by default, in the MAMP directory, there is a, there's a little folder called htdocs, and right now that folder is empty. Otherwise I'd, I'd see something here. So I double click on it, it's empty. And uh, that kind of correlates to the empty page we're seeing here. So if I were to make a folder here, and just call it uh, test, 
and I go back to my web browser and refresh the page, we can see test here. This may not mean a lot, but if this was a file, a file would be displayed here. And we'll, we'll see how WordPress handles that in a minute. So we can make another folder here, so I'll say a test2, and refresh the page, and all of a sudden we have test2 here. So this is great, so you can, you can have several WordPress projects on your hard drive in this folder here. You can even, if you're not quite happy with the, with the location of the folder, so under applications, under the MAMP directory, under the MAMP preferences, you can even uh, say where your web files will live. So if you, if you want to put that somewhere else, that's totally fine, you just, you just browse the new folder. I'm going to leave the defaults for now, just, you know, something to be aware. Now let me make one third folder, which is the one that we're actually using uh, for our WordPress project here, and I'm going to call it WordPress. Maybe I will spell it correctly so I can actually find it uh, in a minute. Come on, there we go. WordPress. So if I refresh this now, there's the WordPress folder. But again, if I go in it, there's nothing there. I can go one directory up, but I can't really, there's nothing, there's nothing in here at the moment. So let's, uh, let's just change that, shall we? First of all, we need the WordPress source files. Absolutely free from WordPress.org. Don't go to WordPress.com here because that is the hosted version of WordPress that is ready to rock on WordPress -s 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 servers. We want WordPress.org and this is where we download WordPress currently 3.5.1, the latest version. You can get it in other languages as well, which we're also not quite interested in. So, in download, hello, download WordPress, there we go. Download process has started. It's not that big a package, so 5 megabytes. Um, very nice, we, uh, we double click it to unzip it. And what we end up with is in fact a, a folder that's called WordPress. And all these files we need. So you can either copy, you just drag the entire WordPress folder around, we might as well do that, or we, we just copy all these files here in this folder and uh, paste them in the folder where you'd like your project to be. So I'm just going to mark them all and copy them, Hit Command C or Control C on a PC, and head over into my HD Docs uh, directory. I've made a little shortcut here because I use this quite a lot, so there we go. And in WordPress, and I'm going to paste 19 items, including their subfolder. So this is all the this is the entire WordPress installation now. But if we were oops, if we were to go back here now, and assuming it lives in the right location, if we refresh the page, WordPress will say, "Hey, look, um, I can see there's some files here, but nothing is." Ask is, is quite configured here. Had, is this alright? Would you like me to create a configuration file? Uh, yes, please, let's do that. So WordPress is very helpful there. And since this is your local system, you never have to worry about uh, file ownership and reading, writing permissions. It's your local system, you read and write as much as you like. If you're dealing with a live uh, production system in the cloud somewhere, then it may not be so easy. But right now, we can just go ahead and go create a configuration file. And before you know it, you're actually roped into the WordPress installer here. We haven't really done anything, we just copied a bunch of files. And I wish it was as easy to just carry on like this. It isn't quite that easy. Um, we, we will now need what WordPress uh, tells us here. We need a database uh, with a username and a password, and we also need a host. Um, and uh, we can just go, let's go. But WordPress will ask us for all these things. And this is where we need to go back to the MAMP start page and, uh, and just, uh, just set up a database so that we can use it. As I said before, the database is where all your posts and pages and your configuration of WordPress will be stored. So the easiest thing here is to go back to our MAMP window and go to open start page. This is going to open a new tab here. This was the WordPress uh, tab, we can close that down. And in here, under PHP My Admin, we can set up a new database. Not only do we set up a new database, we also need a database user. So each database 
uh, needs to have a user and each user needs to have a password. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. Uh, but um, fear not, we will get through this together. On the left hand side here, you will see all the databases that I already have. So um, um, I will add add one to that. So I can I can either create a database and then create a user and then map the user to the database or PHP my admin allows me to just create a user under users. Sometimes this is called privileges. So if your version doesn't show users, have a look if there is a tab that's called privileges. And on the bottom here you just say add user. PHP my admin by the way is a web interface for MySQL. So often hosts uh, for production systems give you access to that. Uh, this is how you can manage your databases. Over the next few episodes of the podcast, we'll see how to work with my, with PHP MyAdmin uh, when it comes to moving sites from one system to another and so forth. Um, so this is kind of, it doesn't look particularly inviting, but believe me, this is going to be one of your best friends if you're doing more of this stuff. So new username, I'm going to call this podcast just so that I have something you know, that, I, that I don't have already host well since we're since our web server lives on the local host which is our local machine and our MySQL server is also on local host this is gonna be local local host you could you could have a remote database server I'm not gonna get into that password well we can have my PHP my admin generate a password for us very cryptic we can use this or you can just use anything that you can remember security on your local system isn't that big an issue right now because it is literally your own laptop and people are unlikely to log into it from the outside so you can just use something extremely simple like password um, and you have to repeat that or you just use something extremely cryptic that you know will be generated at the touch of a button here. or maybe this one here. So I'm just going to copy this, but feel free to use your own here. That's that's no problem. So this would have set up a database user and his password, and it would tell PHP my admin this guy can connect to the database server on localhost. What we also need is a database for this user, and uh, the the good thing here is a database for the user we just click the second button here create database with same name and grant all privileges this is the easiest way to get PHP my admin to create a database with the name podcast which has a user of the name podcast so we'll do exactly that so username local give a password second box from the top here create database with the same name and grant all privileges and you can scroll down we're not going to use these options so we're going to go add user and that was really quick you have added a new user that's very exciting and here on the right hand side we can see it podcast currently there's nothing in there but that's okay WordPress is going to do that for us in a moment so we'll go back to the WordPress installer here in my other tab where it was asking me all these cryptic things but now that we've just set this up we can tell WordPress what we want so the database name is podcast the username is if we trust PHP my admin also podcast also helps if I spell this correctly here podcast password well I, I, um, I used my cryptic one so I'm just gonna paste that in and it's just as cryptic as it was on the other page here. Database host, well this is what we've just uh, talked about as well. It'll be local host, it'll be our machine. And then there's the table prefix here. We'll leave the default and we'll go back to uh, PHP my admin in a second and see what WordPress has done there. So if I hit submit, WordPress will say, hey, there's an empty database, we can connect, we can use it, and this is all the stuff I need to set up to work properly. Let's do that. Since it's my local system, it's uh, it's very quick. So this says that we've uh, we've had a look. We can connect and we can run the installer. Give our site a title. So I'm going to call it uh, Podcast Demo. 
and you can uh, these these are now credentials for your actual WordPress system. So you can you, you can you can you leave admin, or you can leave something else. I, I like Bing vs Lewis, and you can give it another password here. I'm just maybe going to call it password as well. And WordPress tells us that's maybe not such a good idea because it's really weak. And every WordPress user not only whoa, not only needs a password, he also needs an email address. And um, uh, that's not so important on your local system, but in my case, I'm going to be support at wphosting.tv. I really don't want this to appear in my search engines uh, because it's just a local thing. The email address isn't even that important in this case, but uh, we'll give it one just because we can. So install WordPress, this is now going to run the installer and it's already rocked and rolled. This is this was very quick. This usually takes a lot longer on a on a live production service in the cloud. If we go quickly go back to PHP my admin, go back to our podcast here. I was I was looking for a refresh button and didn't quite find it. So there we go. This is now the stuff that WordPress has set up. So uh, exactly 11 tables with the prefix WP underscore and this is what WordPress wanted to know hey what do you want me to use as a table database database table prefix and this is what it meant so technically you have you could go ahead and install another WordPress instance in the same database you could call it WP2 underscore you could call it beta underscore you could call it any, anything you like WordPress is going to amend this automatically this allows you if you only have one database you could run several things out of it I do not recommend you do that though because uh, I mean you can easily create another database if you have multiple projects and multiple sites out of one database and you ever come to moving one site but not the other then you're gonna end up in a bit of a mess there because you can only export all the tables in the database so let's not go there I'm, I'm a big fan of having one website with one dedicated database and uh, this is it but for security purposes on a live system I always highly recommend changing this from WP underscore to something else if you can but enough of that let's go back to uh, to WordPress here and uh, before we log in which you can more than welcome to we go to uh, to our front page again to uh, localhost call on 8888 forward slash WordPress and we can see the standard WordPress installation up and running this is exciting this is extremely exciting if you're doing development work or if you're doing anything really with WordPress on your local system so let's go back to login I think this was me this was my password and I'm in the back end, just like I'm used to it from all the thousands of websites I administer on a daily basis. And it works exactly uh, as uh, you know, as as we as we know and love WordPress. Uh, you can you can do everything, uh, but the difference is that things are a lot faster, so a lot more responsive. Uh, databases can be queried a lot quicker. Uh, Hello Podcast. Publishing pages literally happens in a flash. I always like having two tabs open here. Uh, one on the back end, one on the front end. And there we go. And this is how you do that. So in uh, back in our... Where was it here? Back in our folder. we Nothing has changed. It's still the same amount of files. But the moment I add... Uh, post data this is now this is now going to be added to the database so um, if we were to go to uh, posts I could now see that this is the first post this sample post hello podcast this is my post so this is where all that text gets stored and this is why we need a uh, need a database connection there okay that was it so we're going to be using this demo installation a lot over the next few weeks uh, and I'll show you lots of funky other things that you can do with WordPress. Uh, thank you for watching. 
uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, any comments, then please uh, uh, consider leaving a comment uh, or contacting me on wpguru.co.uk. Um, I'll see you next time.